हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू जीएस पॉडकास्ट मिनी सीरीज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट माइक्रोब्स इन ह्यूमन वेलफेयर सो एज वी नो दैट माइक्रोब्स आर प्रेजेंट एवरीवेयर इवन अंडर एक्सट्रीम कंडीशंस वेयर नो अदर लाइफ फॉर्म्स कुड एग्जिस्ट सो माइक्रोब्स कैन सर्वाइव अंडर एक्सट्रीम कंडीशंस एज वेल ऑल्सो दीज माइक्रोब्स आर डाइवर्स एंड इंक्लूड मेनी माइक्रोस्कोपिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स सच एज virus bacteria protozoa etc and these microbes may be pathogenic but they also have an important role in the human welfare these microbes can be easily grown in laboratories or at industrial scale for research and production of the various useful products so in this video we will understand the various applications of microbes and how they are useful to human and the environment in many ways so we will discuss the various applications of microbes in the household products in the industrial products such as in the fermentation of beverages and in the production of antibiotics after that we will discuss its application in the sewage treatment followed by the biogas production and the bio fertilizers so let's begin now let's see the various application of microbes in the household products so curd is prepared by inoculating milk with lactobacillus that produce lactic acid and it partially coagulates the milk which forms the curd and curd is more nutritious than milk as it contains a number of organic acids and vitamin b12 another application is in the preparation of fermented dough or batter which is used to make various south indian delicacies such as idli and dosa and the batter in these preparation is fermented due to the carbon dioxide production by the bacteria bread is also produced by using the yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae next is toddy which is also made by fermenting the palm sap also microbes are used to ferment soya beans fish and bamboo shoots to prepare various delicacies so we can see that microbes are used extensively in the household products now let's see the industrial applications of the microbes so it is used in the production of fermented beverages and saccharomyces cerevisiae which is also known as brewers yeast has been used since ancient time for the production of alcoholic uh, beverages from the malt uh, malt and fruit juices now let's see another application of microbes in the production of antibiotics and vaccines so microbes are widely used to make antibiotics such as antibiotic bacitracin which is made by bacillus sub- subtilis which is used in the treatment of syphilis lymphonema or reticulosis etc likewise streptomycin which is made by streptomycin griseus which is used in the treatment of meningitis pneumonia tuberculosis and local infections etc also chloromycetin which is made by streptomyces benengeli which is used in the treatment of typhoid so these are some example of antibiotics prepared by using microbes now let's see the application in the industrial products so various chemicals and organic acids are produced by using microorganisms such as citric acid which is extensively used in food and pharmaceutical industries is produced mainly by submerged fermentation process using the fungus aspergillus niger next one that is acetic acid which is used in the preparation of vinyl acetate plastics dyes etc is obtained from the bacteria acetobacter acid likewise lactic acid is obtained from the bacteria lactobacillus also butyric acid which is used as food and perfume additives is produced from bacteria clostridium bretellium 
and ethanol is obtained from the fungus Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And in addition to this, various other enzymes are also produced by microorganisms and they are used commercially for various purposes. One such example is bacteria streptococcus which produces an enzyme called as streptokinase that is generally uh, that is uh, genetically modified and used as a clot buster for removing clots from the blood vessels. So these are the industrial applications of various microbes. Now let's understand use of microbes in the sewage treatment. So it is important to treat wastewater before it's disposable because it contains organic matter and some pathogenic bacteria. And for this purpose, sewage treatment plants are used. And the microbes which are present naturally in the sewage water is used to treat the wastewater. Now this process involves two steps that is primary treatment and the secondary treatment. So let's start with the primary treatment. So in the first step the process of filtration and sedimentation are performed to remove uh, the floating debris and grit that is soil and small pebbles, particles uh, etc. And in this process, primary sludge, which is the solid substance, usually settles down in the bottom, leaving behind the primary effluent on the top. Now, after that, secondary treatment is performed. So, it is also called as the biological treatment. And in this process, the growth of aerobic microbes is facilitated into large aeration tanks by mechanically agitating the effluent and pumping the air into it and this process decreases the bi biochemical oxygen demand. Here biochemical oxygen demand refers to the amount of oxygen consumed by bacteria and other microorganisms while they decompose organic matter under the aerobic conditions at a specific temperature. Okay, now in the next step after significantly reducing the biochemical oxygen demand, the effluent is allowed to settle down in the set, uh, settling tank and now it is called as activated sludge. After that, the activated sludge is digested in an anaerobic sludge digester where some of the sludge is allowed to move back to the aeration tank and it serves as an inoculum for uh, the further treatment and after that finally biogas is produced from the digested sludge that can be used as a fuel. So use of microbes in sewage treatment helps to remove the organic matter and it also facilitates the production of the biogas. Now let's uh, see the application of microbes in the biogas production. So methanogens for example methanobacterium which are present in the anaerobic sludge and produce biogas in the sewage treatment. The same bacteria is also present in the rumen of cattle and help in the digestion of cellulose. So these bacteria help in the production of gober gas which mostly contain methane and other gases and it can be used in villages for various uh, purposes such as it can be used for water heating, room heating etc. And it is commonly used in the rural areas as a cooking gas. So uh, these microbes help in the production of biogas. Now let's understand how these microbes act as a biofertilizers. So fungi, bacteria and cyanobacteria are the main source of biofertilizers. For example, rhizobium is, is present in the root nodules of leguminous plant and it fixes atmospheric nitrogen in the growing leguminous plants. Likewise, azotobacter and azospirillum are free living nitrogen fixing uh, bacteria present in the soil. They also fix the atmospheric nitrogen for the plants. 
Next biofertilizer is the fungal association in mycorrhiza which enriches the nutrient content of the soil. So we can say that most of the cyanobacteria can fit the atmospheric nitrogen and act as a biofertilizer for example nostoc, anavina, oscillatoria etc. So these are some of the microbes that act as a biofertilizers. Okay, now let's see a question which is asked in CSC prelims. So the question is consider the following. Uh, so here three is, uh, organisms, microorganisms are given and it is asked that which of the above can be cultured in artificial or synthetic medium. So here microbes like bacteria and fungi can be grown on nutritive media to form colonies and such cultures are useful in studies of microorganisms and their applications in various ways. But unlike bacteria, the viruses require a living host for uh, their re uh, replication. So here the correct answer is option number A that is bacteria and fungi can be cultured in the artificial or synthetic medium. Hence the uh, correct answer is option number A. Okay, now if you have any doubt regarding this question or you have any suggestion, please write it in the comment box and also you can download the PDF from the description box and stay tuned with us for such more interesting GS topics. Till then, thank you everyone and have a nice day.